So our topic was the image of superheroes over time. I'm Rachel. I'm Aaron. I'm Debbie. I'm, I'm Julian. And our research question was, how has the image of different aspects of superheroes developed and changed throughout time? So I'm doing the female and male body ideals. And um, so for the female bo um, ideal bodies in the 1950s was to be um, skinny, thin, and that is shown here in the Wonder Woman comic, which is made in 1942. Um, the second one in the 1970s, the ideal body for women was to be healthy and tall, and that's shown in the um, 1970s um, uh, Spider-Woman comic. And from the 2000s to now is that um, they didn't want to be just healthy, they wanted to be fit and tall, and that's shown here in the 2000 version of Spider-Man. Okay, so for male superheroes, um, in the 1930s to the 1940s, um, the ideal body for males was to be stout and fit, because the last bo um, ideal body was basically um, males were, um, sh uh, the to be fat was to be rich, so it degraded to this. And for the 1990s now, um, the ideal body for males was to be um, tall and athletic. So the Marvel versus DC debate and comparison has been going on for a long time now, and both companies have definitely changed, and society has shaped how both companies have changed over time. So both companies were founded on the basis of using storytelling and using their characters and heroes to sell their product and drive consumers to want to read their product. But over time, society's pressures to have heroes have this godlike image has made image one of the main points of these comics. So next slide, please. So as you can see, you have the 1940s Adam West interpretation of Batman where, you know, he's not, he's kind of fit, but not as much as Ben Affleck in 2017 where you got this huge six pack versus, you know, one of the first Thor comics in the 1940s, you know, he's kind of skinny. Versus him in 2017 with the crazy abs, just huge biceps, you know, he's killing the game. Alright, so, uh, we wanted to focus on Wonder Woman specifically for one of our topics. And so, uh, she was created in, uh, by Dr. William Walton Marston, right? And so he was hired by what would later become DC Comics to defend uh, against persecutors who believed that all the comics were going to, like, turn their children into, like, uh, warmongering, bloodthirsty people because of the content, right? And uh, Dr. Marston believed that the comic's worst offense was actually their blood curdling masculinity. And so, in order to combat this, he decided to create a female superhero. Next one, please. Uh, but also, from the start, this was very like strange of him. He believed that women's greatest like trait or, or like their greatest allure was that they actually desired to be bonded in like a sexual fashion. And so, from the start, every issue, she was being tied up, chained up, and like captured. In fact, he got uh, messages in, he got, he got letters in, about how his readers were aroused by this, like, behavior here. Next slide, please. Recently, like, uh, more modern, it's definitely straight away from this, because DC Comics, of course, does want to have, like, more, like, it, sexual, ex like, explicitly sexual tones with their superheroes and such. But as uh, Aaron was talking about, the focus had definitely turned more to being, like, a god-like uh, body image. Like, here we have incredibly muscled, incredibly tall, and just like all around, like very large character, as opposed to the earlier, like kind of skinny, kind of small. Next slide. And so, um, even more so here, she's just incredibly fit, very tall, very powerful. Very recently, though, this has been like kind of on the down downhill. Very recently, because um, we actually have images that are more like, you know what, this kind of looks like a real human being, as opposed to literally Aries. So, it's, it's kind of changing. Okay. So basically. Uh, cost so I'm, I'm going to be talking about costumes, and costumes have become such an important part of superheroes nowadays that they basically define the superhero. For example, when you look at Iron Man, he, without his suit, he's basically, he doesn't have any powers, he's just a normal man, uh, very rich though, but he has uh, no powers or nothing, and when he does have a suit, um, he make, it makes him extraordinary versus, uh, you know, just like a normal person, which basically defines why he is a superhero. Okay, so superhero costumes, uh, when superheroes first made, or were, wait, superheroes were uh, first emerged during the Great Depression, which was like pretty bad, which was a pretty bad time for the Americans. Um, and one of the main reasons why they became uh, very important in American society and the entertainment industry was because of their costumes, because they wore uh, 
costumes that represented the flag and the, the nation, and it brought like a spark of hope amongst the people because it showed that, I mean, they were there, they were, they were rooting for them, and they were basically behind them. Okay, so one of the main things that people see when, um, when in a superhero is what they're wearing. So in later times, they started wearing uh, masks and capes. So some people believe that the masks uh, obscured um, the skin and basically it covered up the race and the ethnicity and they believe that nationality, uh, that superheroes um, were supposed to be seen like as a tradition of, as a set of traditions and values versus race and ethnicity. So that was more of a unifying act. So I want to focus more on the actors of superheroes. So some of the first actors like Adam West as Batman and Kirk Allen as Superman don't necessarily look like the superheroes that we see today as Aaron said. And um, it wasn't until the 1970s disco era when stretchy fabrics really became widely popular like spandex and this led to an emphasis on heightened fitness. As you can see of the picture of Linda Carter as Wonder Woman right here, um, by the 1970s women already had the figure that we really like, associate with female superheroes today like the hourglass figure and um, also this uh, focus on high fitness led to the use of like fake muscles and prosthetics in TV shows and movies to get the actors to look like the character without all the work basically. But when producers approached um, Christopher Reeve for his role as Superman and they were like hey, like, you should use fake muscles, and he's like, I don't want to do that, so he decided to do like the natural route and diet and exercise, and he actually um, gained 30 pounds of muscles before his role. And this is a practice commonly seen today. An example of this is Chris Pratt. This is his role as Andy from Parks and Recreation to his um, preparation for his role in Guardians of the Galaxy. He actually lost 60 pounds in six months, and the second picture is something he posted on Instagram. Um, to basically show off his training. And as I said before, this is something that's like, most superhero movies you see, this is what they're doing in preparation for it. So, in conclusion, we can definitely see that the body standards surrounding superheroes have definitely become more extreme over time. And we as a group don't necessarily believe that this is a good thing. Of course, of course you wanna like relate to your heroes, right? And so maybe there are a couple options that we can take to do this. We can make the emphasis more on the costume. So it's just like, uh, like Divi was saying, it's Iron Man inside the suit, or uh, the prosthetics, like uh, Rachel was saying. Or we can just simply raise awareness, like this isn't really what a real human being looks like. It's completely unrealistic sometimes. Or there is the potential that people don't really see this as a problem at all. Of course, they are fictional characters. And like, of course, there are people who obviously like enjoyed the sexualization of Wonder Woman in the first place, and so they might enjoy how it's like completely cool, like all fiction. It's like, yeah, biggest man on the planet. It's the whole thing. So, of course, like it's just you have to consider. Not everyone thinks it's a problem, but it's probably something that we should change just so that like everyone understands that these are not real human beings. Thank you.